So Stan, I've got this email from you and it has to do with sexual issues. And um, let me summarize, let me summarize. You and I were talking about this before the recording started. So let me just summarize a little bit. Um, your wife came out to you, what was it, a month and a half ago? Yes. Okay. That um, she had a, another lover. She was, to use your terms, polyamory. Uh, that's correct? Yes. Okay. Now, when I first read that, my original thought was, oh, uh, you know, he's going to have, he has some emotional issues because of all of this, but actually you kind of liked that to begin with. You, uh, it was like, like exciting in some fact. Talk about that for a minute. Could you? Uh, yeah, it didn't bug. Um, it didn't bother me that she was actually having a different, different lovers and she was also uh, bisexual. It did excite me. Uh, it's just exciting but actually the sex life, the sex drive went up when she came out. It was like three times a day and we got much more connected. We've been talking about our past experiences. We got going out more often than we used to. Yeah, okay. And how long did this heightened sexual excitement uh, last? Um, it's actually dried out about a week or so. Uh, let's say we can have. Okay, so for about a month, if I'm yeah. hearing hearing it right, uh, it was three times a day, yay, yay, yay! It was an exciting time. Mm -hmm. In fact, you could even connect better, yes. not just sexually, but otherwise. Am I hearing that right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Good. All right. And then, for some, I'm gathering unexplained reasons so far, or at least a reason you don't know about. All that dried up. Your sex drive basically dried up and so on? Yes. Yeah? Mm, yes. Did it go to zero or, or just got much less? No, kind of. Uh, now I had to be stimulated to have an erection. And it's not, the drive is just not there. Okay. Yeah. And how are you and your wife getting along now as a result of that? Uh, the communication, we're still, chat, we're still talking, you know, uh, but she has so, her like uh, health issues, you know, uh, so it doesn't really affect, it's more affects me than the relationship. You know. It affects... Mm. I'm yeah, sorry. Me, it affects me as a as a as as a, as a male. Uh huh. Than anything else. Okay. Now, before we started recording, I was asking you a bit about where all this, where your response to all of this was coming from, mm -hmm. and you were telling me it was cultural, uh, yes. you know, family kind of stuff. Uh, you were you were raised to believe your wife should be pure when you're married. That is a virgin. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, cheating not allowed once married. It's a real big no-no. Tell me, is that a cultural no-no? Is it a religious no-no or both or what? It was, it was uh, religious and cultural and societal. Okay. All together. All right. So here you are. If I, I, I'm kind of painting a picture, but I want you to help me repaint it because the I don't have all the facts yet. Okay. The picture I'm seeing is here you are. And this circumstance occurs is exciting at first. The cultural religious thing somehow isn't kicking in at the moment. Yay. Let's, let's go. There's a connection. There's, there's higher sex drive, more of it and so on. Then I'm hearing, I'm hearing the cultural religious societal thing kicks in and uh, down, down she goes. Did I say it right? Yes, yes, I believe so. Oh, yeah. All right, okay. 
So it's the now you're you're you live in the United States, but your cultural background is elsewhere in the world, right? Yes. I mean, you were raised in a different country, different cultures, different religions, and so on. Mm-hmm. So you come here to this country, and of course, it's quite different than that. But still, and again, always correct me, the original conditioning about this is still kicking around in there someplace. Okay. Now, it's my experience, at least on what I've heard so far, is that until we can do something with that original conditioning, cultural, religious, societal conditioning, this, this impotence level, this lack of sex drive issue is going to still have a cause. Okay? That doesn't mean you won't get better at it in time and so on, but it's still kicking around in the background. There's a cause. Some, let me ask you, uh, first of all, do I have that? Does that seem right to you? Yeah, you're correct. Yes, yes. Okay, all right. So let, let me ask you this. I mean, it, it's possible. In fact, what I'm going to try to do, at least it's just, this is how I'm seeing it for now, is to go back to the cause, the conditioning, and try to relieve that, try to shift that so that it's not burdening you anymore. But what I want to ask you up front is, if I do that, and think about your answer for a minute, Stan, if I do that and if we are successful at that are you going to be missing something that you think is really important i think it's not missing i think it's going to be more gaining it's more what wait i didn't hear the word gaining gaining okay yeah it's going to be more gaining of experience more gaining of uh, relationships even physical or non-physical, you know, it's, it's more, it's more connecting, not only with my, my, my wife, because the relationship is now, it's kind of open relationship. It's kind of an open relationship. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me get back to my question then a little bit more. Okay. So what's your, this is my term. Okay. I think what you're saying is this past cultural, religious, societal conditioning is a burden for you now. Do you yes. see it that way or not? Yes, I do. Um, but uh, again, see, I really want to explore possible resistance to this. Okay. Um, so in one sense, you know, when we're raised in a, a given society, with parents that have certain beliefs and all of this, it becomes like a part of us for many people. It's just part of our past, part of our history, part of who we are in one sense. That's not true for everybody, but it's true for many. That's why I'm, why I'm exploring it. So what is your sense of, if we let go of that, are we taking something at some level, some subconscious level away from you that you're really not going to like at some, in some level? I'm actually thinking my mom is not going to like it. You're thinking what now? <laughs> my mom is not going to like it. Your mother wouldn't like it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's important. All right. Or it could be. Could be important. Let me make a little note here. What would your mother say? Oh, it's going to be like really taboo. You know, uh, again, I'm, I, I, we have uh, different. Really, we have, uh, she's we, going to think like it's a really taboo, uh, like very strange, very. Because she raised me the way she raised me, because this is whatever I know, it came from her, not from my father. Okay. So if you let go of all of this, and it's just no longer important. Or it's less important or however far we can get with this good start session we're going to enter into here, or we're now in, actually. Um, would you have difficulty? T- 
talking to your mother and saying, hey, mom, I don't care about that stuff anymore. I will have difficulty to come home and say, my mom was home and say, listen, it's kind of, uh, we love each other, but we like to, and we love more. And uh, I know she's not going to be open for it. Okay. Now, the important thing here is not how your mother responds to this. The important thing is how you respond. That's what we're really looking for is your, your mother's going to respond however she responds. Okay. Um, And by the way, it is, I've seen in the past where, where mothers and parents and this kind of thing actually shift their own perception of it, even Mm -hmm. though they're not currently, that's not a guarantee. I've just seen it happen before. Um, we're all one after all. <laughs> okay. Um, but what would your response be? Would, oh, something's wrong with me. Oh, oh, I've lost my mother's love. Could be yeah. very important. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 a fear. It's a hesitation, uh, intimidation. It is a fear of losing her love, and maybe she will push me away. Actually. Well, get in touch with that for a moment, okay? On a scale of zero to 10, how big is that fear? It's 10. A 10, okay. When you think about it, do you get any physical sensations in your body? Yeah, on the left side, I feel more on the left side of the chest. Is it a tightness or a constriction or a what? Uh, I was go for... A- for discomfort, somewhat tightness. Yeah. You said tightness? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, that's good. See, I, I'm glad I explored that with you because, because see, ultimately, see, the unseen therapists can do marvels with anything that we are willing to let go of. Okay. But we have free will. We can believe what we want to believe. We can hide what we want to hide. We can repress, forget, all kinds of stuff that we do. And to the extent we, are, we don't have things, metaphorically, on the table that we are willing to let go of, she's not going to touch it because that's interfering with your free will. And that's a very unloving thing to do. All right. So the t- task before for us that I'm seeing is you and I going over this and looking at the real, at the real hurdles here, the real causes. And this thing about your mother and her response, your response to what her response is going to be. That's something at some level is important to you and you may not be willing it, to let go of it. Uh, that's me talking, but how are you? What's your reaction to all that? No, I, I agree with you. Uh, I, I understand what you say. Well, okay. Is the is letting go of this? If we were successful with our good start session, mm-hmm. and and we opened the door for you and you were able now to see things differently culturally and so on and adopt more of a accepting thing of what's really happening and so on. So that that cause of the potential of the impotence would start fading. Okay. That would be a good, a good thing. Okay. Yes. We want that. Is that more important than, um, Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Having to let your mother reaction. Yeah. Yeah, it is much more important. It is much more important for me, at least, how I see it to experience the life more than she had a chance to. Well, if I get it right, uh, how often do you see your mother or you talk to your mother? The, she lives around the corner. I see her once a week. I see her. Oh, oh, okay, okay. So does she know yet about the marital arrangement? No, 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 no one knows. Would she know eventually, whatever, regardless of what we did here today? Well, depends how I go 
I, I don't know. I cannot answer. I, uh, depends how I'm going to feel about it, you know. Well, would you normally tell her? No. Okay. Is the fear what she's going to say if you tell her? Is the fear how we're going to be looking at me? How I, as a family member, uh, even my uncles live in the same town. I'm sure she's not going to share it, but it's the fear how I'm going to be looked by my mother than anything else. Okay. Well, I'm putting down here that fear, thinking, see, that's your emotional response to it. Now, I don't know how far we can get with it because we got a number of, I'm seeing a number of things that are sort of in front of us. Um, but what, one possibility here would be to take this presumed fear you're going to have, telling your mother and her, your fear response to her response. Okay. Oh, they're going to look at me and I, you know, I won't be a member of the family in their mind and I'm, something's wrong with me and I'm tainted, <laughs> blemished, or whatever. Okay. Whether you tell her or not is something else. But she's going she, to have that reaction whether or not we have this session. Am I right? Uh, if you tell her. Sure. If, if you if tell, tell her. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we can... I'm seeing two possible aims here. One is an aim at your, just your cultural response and all of that. Okay. The other is the fear response to your mother. Mm -hmm. They're related, but I also see them in a way as separate. Does that seem right to you? Yeah, it makes, makes sense. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's go back to the cultural thing for the moment. And by the way, Stan, what I'm doing, and for those listening in, what I'm doing here is I'm gathering lots of information first. And we're going to be doing some reframing that is looking at it through different glasses and so on. The hope being that we can take more and more of what we might not want to look at, you know, might be repressing, might have even forgotten and so on, and take it from under the table so we can put it on top of the table where the willingness to let it go is more pronounced and unseen therapists can do more, more with it. So you and I are going to talk for a little while before we bring in unseen therapists. Okay. Yes. That's a yes. Yes. yes right. Okay. So let's go back to the cultural thing for a moment. Give me, if, if you can, or, or, or tell me, what were you told and by who, by, by your religious leaders, by your mother? Tell me things you were told. I, I know okay. some things, like your wife has to be pure and yes, all of that, yes. but tell me some other things, would you? Well, cultural, the way I've been raised, Eva, it was told directly, probably directly, but when you're getting married, the wife has to be like a, a virgin, basically. Not basically, she, she, has to, she has to be a virgin. Was she a virgin? No, my wife, no. Okay, so, you, so in one sense, you violated the culture to begin with. Indeed, yes. Was she a, a virgin as a result of you or somebody else? My wife? No, someone else. No, she, she, my wife was uh, dating other people before she met you. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. My you're wife was dating someone else uh, okay. before me. I mean, yeah, we've okay. been dating. We've been dating before we met. Okay. All right. So she was not a virgin when you got married. Okay. So in that sense, you violated that cultural thing. Okay. Yes. Did you tell your mother? Does she know that? <laughs> no. Okay. You, so your mother assumes that your wife was a virgin when you got married. No, we got married at age 35, so it was, uh, it was kind of uh, irrational to think a person at age 35 would be a virgin. So no, it, but it was not questioned or asked. It was not questioned or asked. 
So if, if I get it right, mother would like to assume that was the case and don't tell me otherwise. Uh, I, I believe she's more logical person. Uh, she lives in this world in, in US, you know, I think she understands that. Okay. But yeah, she didn't ask and didn't tell. I didn't tell. I'm making a little note here, okay. Um, okay, so that's one thing. The wife must be pure. She must be a virgin. Okay. What, what, what else? What else kicks around? Oh, well, she has to be attentive. She has to do everything in the house. It's basic cultural stuff. Um, basically, she has to enslave herself while I'm sitting on the sofa and watching TV. She has to enslave herself while you're watching the TV? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that doesn't sell well here in this country. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. I mean, it actually happens. It actually happens, but there's a fair amount of female resistance to that. <laughs> And it's growing and growing and growing and growing. Okay. But what about you and how you conduct yourself? What kind of cultural things are there? Or can uh, men just do whatever they want to do? I don't understand the question. You're growing up as a boy. You're telling me some of the restrictions the women would have. What restrictions would you have as a male? Any? What restriction do I have at the moment or when I was young? Okay. You know, when you were young. I'm looking for the, the, cultural, the cultural baggage. No restrictions. So, so you can be a non-virgin and that's fine if you get, when you get married. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. All right. All right. But if you if you if your wife is not a virgin, does that mean something is wrong with you for marrying her? Um, I never thought about it. I would say wrong with me. Yes and no kind of thing. Like the wrong with me, yes, why I couldn't find something who is virgin? And no, why would I look for some virgin if I love someone dearly? Well, I hear a, con I hear a conflict there. Yeah. It's not a for sure written, written in stone rule that you bought. Okay. Well, you got yeah, it correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. Do you think that rule, well, I, I'm gonna ask it more generally, the cultural, religious, societal stuff that you came from, right, that are different than those in America. Right. Do you think those are, are, are there any values in theirs that you really should keep? No, think about it. It's somewhat a little bit hypocritical because I know, and I'm sure people have been divorced, even most religious people being got divorced from their from wives. So, no, 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 no. Okay. There is nothing I should keep. There's no value. All right. All right. Now, one other, one other thing I want to go over here it has to do with your mother. Your mother, I'm gathering, um, is uh, fully in line with the cultural, religious, and societal beliefs of that society. Really important mm. to her. Yeah. yeah, keep going, sir. Okay. Such that, and you may not know this with, with a surety, but as best you can. 
such that if her son violates these things, she's going to have a big problem. Depends what rules it will violate. All right. Well, what rule? What rule is? What rule or rules are so sacrosanct they shall not be violated? Can you give me but that? Just, in my view, if I'll go into the my wife, she's not going to take it badly. However, if my wife go into the me, she'll take. Oh, if the relationship is going to be open relationship, she will take it uh, offensively. Okay, so I'm not, the, you're going to need to say that again because because this, the connection here isn't perfect. Okay, yeah. say say it again. Say it again. So, no, so I'm saying if my if I go to cheat on my wife, she, my my mother is not going to be like too offensive about it. So if you if you cheat on your wife, your mother won't be all, all offended. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. But, but if, if it's going to be like, but if it's going to be like non traditional marriage. Like in marriage where you can actually explore, but still love one another is going to be, uh, I don't want to say not accepted, but not uh, open for it. Okay. But if the wife cheats on you, then what? Uh, From your mother's point of view. Not very healthy. Probably need to work on your relationship. Blah, blah, blah. Is she gonna is she going to get really upset and lose sleep and all of that or just have some concern? Uh, knowing how she's gonna lose sleep. You you're what? She's probably gonna lose sleep. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. In America, and I don't know about other countries, but it, in America, not everybody, but there are some married couples or together couples who choose to go have sex parties with other couples uh, once a week or once a month or something like that. Okay. They do that. And it's a fun thing. That's what they do. They like that. Okay. And they think that's, that's valuable for themselves, valuable for the relationship to just be free in that, in that sense. Your mother's reaction to that would be? A big no, no. Okay. All right. All right. I'm looking, I'm, I want to, I want to bring an unseen therapist in a moment. Okay. But I'm looking, I'm looking now for a, um, a specific event. Um, and I've somehow guided to go to mother, to the mother, a specific event, someplace, somewhere in your past and the farther back, the better childhood, if you can, okay. where mother would say something to you or communicate in some fashion to you, some cultural, some, I mean, maybe you did something wrong that you, you know, that your mother really does not agree with and criticize you for it or something like that. And you, I, I'm looking for your, you, oh, I, 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 you know, something's wrong with me if I don't, if I don't respond, uh, that kind of response. Can you find a specific event like that? Maybe this one, when I was about three or four, I came out of the bathroom naked. Okay. And she said, aren't you ashamed? Go, go, go put your pants on. Something like that. Okay. And do, do you recall your response to that? Like, oh, oh, oh I, I really did a bad thing. Something's wrong with me and so on. Uh, yeah. I feel like I did something bad. All right. Do this for me, if you would, Stan. Close your eyes. Revisit that. Get back in your body. Walk out of the bathroom naked. Your mother says, oh, you know, and your response is something. But relive that and tell me on a scale of zero to 10 that the intensity may be. 
It's like Dan. I'm scared. Looks like she's even raised her voice. It's not like, oh, go please put your pants on. It's like her voice went up. And it's a shame. Like, don't you ashamed? Like, you know, kind of thing. Or is a shame that too? All right. I'm, I'm writing this down. Hmm. And the, emo the emotional response is a 10 <clears throat> now as you think about it. Yes. And how old were you then, as best you recall? Uh, let's say between two and four, maybe two and three years old. Well, I'll just say three. That's good enough for this, for this purpose. And, and were you feeling any physical sensations as a result of that? Yeah, uh, I feel something in my throat and the left side of my chest is a little bit restricted, tight. I'm making a note. All right. Okay, so we're going to bring an unseen therapist now. Okay, and 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 you need to know up up front that I I'm not sure where we're going to be going with all of this. I just start tuning in, and metaphors show up, and we go places, and whatever we do, we do. Okay. Um, so we're going to start with this specific event. I'm not sure where we're going to go from there. All right. All right. Yes. Okay. All right. So if you would just close your eyes, take a nice, nice deep breath. And, uh, just as a way of inviting unseen therapists, just Recall a loving moment someplace in your past and just nod your head whenever you're there. Yes. All right, good. And just as a reminder, that's simply a way of inviting unseen therapists. She, she's been listening all along, by the way, and been guiding all along. <laughs> Problem is we're not always listening to her, but by recalling the loving moment, we're inviting her. And now we're saying, we're going to give you a little something to work with us on. The three of us are going to work together. I see a different look on your face. Uh, I, I, something you need to tell me? No, I feel more, oh. more relaxed. Okay, good. All right. Um, so she, we're going to give her a little something to work on. The three of us will work together with unseen therapist you and i um and see where we go see where we go but we're we're letting her know we're paying attention and we're listening that's a simple little thing like that so shift your focus now stand back to um well let me just say one other thing before we do that any time during any of this feel free to if something comes up, something you need to tell me about, something we weren't expecting, anything like that, just feel free to say it, okay? Because we're working together on this. All right. So we're going to shift our focus back to age three, right. thereabouts. Uh, you're in the bathroom. You come out. You're naked. Well, you're age three. Who cares? <laughs> but... Your mother sees this and it triggers, it plugs into her cultural stuff. Oh, 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 this is wrong. You better go put your pants on. And you, your response is, oh, I'm bad. I'm shameful. Something's wrong with me. That kind of a response. It's a 10. You know, there's some throat and some left side, you know, discomfort and tension and stuff like that. Now, unseen therapist knows, as you know, you're three years old. What do you know at that time? You're just responding to a love authority. You're subject to your own cultural, religious, societal beliefs from your own country of birth and all of that. Which is different, by the way, from other cultures in the world. No two cultures are identical in these things, especially not compared to America, where you are now. 
So anyway, you have this shame. Something's wrong with me. It's a 10. It's a 10. So we're going to ask unseen therapists about this. Have her help us. And she says, you know, Stan, let's do something. Let's imagine in front of you is a cloud. It's maybe 10 feet wide and 10 feet high and 10 feet deep. And this cloud represents all the cultural stuff, including this one specific event that was kicking around at the time you were growing up. All those influences. I'm seeing you shaking your head. Do you need to tell me something? Um, yeah, I just gave a thought uh, why she cannot love me the way I am. I'm sorry, you, you need to say that again. I didn't hear it. Why, why my mother cannot love me the way I am. Oh, okay, so the question you're having is why couldn't my mother love me the way I am? Okay, yeah. all right. All right. And that is a re that's one of your responses as well as shame? Yes. Okay. All right. So in this cloud is going to be your mother, not only your culture and societal stuff and the religious stuff and all of that, but your mother is in there who echoes her version of these things anyway. Okay. And this cloud this cloud is a dark cloud. It's like a thunder cloud. It looks ominous. It looks, gee, what can we do about, I mean, this cloud is, is, is like impenetrable. You can't, it's going to hang over me forever unless I do something with it. It represents all this stuff and why my mother can't love me just the way I am. And so unseen therapists, is going to stand beside you, arms around you, and says, walk with me now. And there you are, age three. Right. Walk with me now into this cloud. I know it seems a little frightening, but let's just take a little baby step. And if we get closer and closer to it, you can feel the mist, cool, kind of fun mist of the cloud on your face. Oh, maybe not so bad. A cloud is nothing more than a cloud. You can walk right through a cloud. Hmm. So you walk into the cloud. And here's the cooling mist and all of that. And you see dark places in the cloud. And by the way, as you're entering the cloud, there are some labels on the front of the cloud. And the label says, Shame on you. And the label says, you must obey these cultural religious things. It says that. All right. That's just the label for it. So we walk right by those labels into the cloud. And now you see your mother. And you recognize that in your perception from your mother, comes all these other dark spots in the cloud. You should do this. You must do that. Women, wives must be virgins. You must conduct yourself in a certain way. Put your pants on. Shame on you. All of these things. An unseen therapist says, look, inside this cloud, it's your mother and your culture that's making all these dark spots. I see you shaking and moving a bit. Something you need to tell me? No, it's my reaction. Energy okay. moving. Um... All right. Okay. So let me pause a minute. You can keep your eyes closed, Stan. But let me ask you, would I be correct in assuming that one of your mother's greatest needs would be love? No, you're right. Yeah. It's true. Yet? Yes? Yes. Be, yes. Okay. All right. And would it be accurate to presume that a way of her interfacing with love is these rules you have to comply with? 
cultural rules, societal <laughs> rules, religious rules. This is how you are somebody. You've got these rules. You need to comply. You need to be like everybody else. You can't stand out. You can't be different or nobody will love you. I can be loved if I comply with these rules. I'm making this up, but is it on point? No, it's true. It's really on point. Yep. Okay. All right. So these things become for her a form of love. Am I correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. And it was, would it seem natural? And I'm getting this from unseen therapists, by the way, but would it seem natural that her way of loving her son is to make sure he complies with the rules so he can have love? Yeah, it's true. Okay. She may not know how to love because she really hasn't experienced much of it herself. And her inability to love you for who you really are, she can get confused because who you really are and who you're supposed to be, according to her conditioning, is you've got to follow these rules. If you do, yes. if you do then you will be loved in, your, in the world. And she will be a successful mother. And if you don't, uh-oh, she may not be so successful. She's going to respond. How am I doing? Uh, yeah, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now we see mother. See, you're only three years old. You don't have the maturity to understand this. But Unseen Therapist is giving you that maturity. She can do that. She's giving you that maturity. And now you can see your mother for someone who, like you and like everybody else, really needs love. Really needs love. And now we're going to do a little exercise inside this cloud. We're going to look at your mother standing in front of you. Maybe we can see some, because she's involved with all these conditionings, some tension in her body, in her face, in her eyes, and so on. And within her is this empty love sponge. It's like a water sponge. A water sponge fills up with water and overflows and so on. But this love sponge fills up with love which is, it's maybe not completely dry, but it needs filling up. And so Unseen Therapist is asking you to look at her as someone with an empty love sponge who is reacting to you and the rest of the world according to her lack of love and her own conditioning. She's trying to lay that on you in her own loving way. She is confused. And so unseen therapist who has an overflowing love sponge at all times shares that love with you. And together, together in a very loving way, the two of you start sharing love with your mother and filling up her love sponge. And in your mind's eye, if you can, as best you can, watch that love sponge fill up and notice her posture may soften her face may soften her eyes may soften she may still think these conditionings are important but she's going to let go of them because her son does not live in that culture anymore neither does she for that matter lives in a different culture different rules, different conditionings. And she can love her son as he adapts to this newer environment. She might even loosen herself up a little bit and adapt a little bit more within this environment. So take, a, take some time now, whatever time you choose. We're Got plenty of time, Stan. And imagine yourself 
sending, sharing love with your mother, watching her love sponge fill, the softness that's coming up around her body and so on. Just do that for a while. There are no grades for this. You don't get an A or a C. Just do whatever you can with it for now. And whatever you've gone as far as you can go, with your eyes still closed, just say something and we will proceed. Okay. All right, good. Were you able to do it, by the way? Yeah, I see her glowing. I see my mother glowing. All right, good. All right. Now, we we're still in the cloud. Right. Seems easier to be in now. And you still notice all these other dark places around that are emanating. It's your perception of these dark places. Like the fact that the cloud is even dark is your perception to begin with. But here is all of these other things your mother may have said to you, including coming out of the bathroom naked, you know, oh, shame on you kind of thing. Put your pants on. Uh, that and other things, not only from your mother, but from all of your culture, from maybe your father, your background, things you may have seen on television or read in the newspapers or heard from your peers or taught in school or whatever. All these dark clouds and unseen therapists is going to go with you from dark spot to dark spot to dark spot to dark spot. Stand in front of the dark spot and watch as it turns white. Because it's only dark because of your three-year-old perception. Hardly something to rely on. Go from dark spot to dark spot, turning them to white, all these events and things. Do that for a while and just let me know when it, just tell me, say, I'm done whenever you're, that happens, okay? Whenever you're done. Okay. All right. And now let's move out of this cloud. It should be a white cloud. Hopefully it's a white cloud now, at least if not as dark as it was, but white, hopefully. Let's move out of it. And let's find another cloud. And this cloud is another dark cloud, same size, floating in front of you. And it has a label on the front of it that says, my response to my wife's cheating. And it also has in there my impotence right under, underneath all of that. And so with Unseen Therapist, we'll now enter the cloud. You can see your wife in there. And you can see the adult, well, you're, a, you're, you're you are now the adult, not the three-year-old anymore, okay? But you can now see your wife in there. You can also see you in there. All right. And as you see you, you see these dark spots around you that are still affecting you. What's wrong with me? I'm... My wife is cheating because maybe I did something wrong. I wasn't enough. That's exciting for a while, but eventually these things are like a little burden. They're like, I really should be in a hot air balloon floating up free in the skies. But I've got so much ballast here right within the cloud. So much ballast that all this stuff looks dark to me and I'm stuck on the ground because there's so much weight in here. And so the cloud now transforms to this 
hot air balloon that you are in. And all the ballast or all these things, all these cultural things, put your pants back on. Shame on you. Your, your wife must be a virgin. You must be a good husband. You must have done all of this. One by one, you pick up some of the ballast. And the ballast, one, the first bag of sand ballast has a label on it that says, put your pants on. And you look at that and smile. Doesn't need to be there anymore. And you gently put it over the side. And you look at another event. You look at your wife cheating in any response you have to that. And it says, my one of my responses to my wife's cheating. And you smile at it. Smile. It's exciting for a while. Why can that excitement come back? Okay. But this ballast keeps the excitement from being there. So you take the bag of sand and gently take it overboard. And the with these two ballasts, these bags of sand gone, the hot air balloon starts to lift a bit off the ground. Right. And then there's another one. It's another memory. It's another cultural thing. It's somebody, a, a religious person said something in school, this kind of thing. A look in your mother's eye. These are all different bags of sand, little by little. You look at them, you smile, you give them some love, but you put them overboard and the balloon rises a little bit more. Another bag, off, it, off the side it goes, higher, higher, and higher. Now, take a little time, label in your own mind each of the cultural, religious, societal things that may be in the way of really regaining sexual excitement and gently put them overboard and let the balloon float up into the sky, being sexually, romantically free. Do that to whatever extent you want, take whatever time you want. And when you're done, just open your eyes and we'll, we'll talk. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, were you able to follow along? You have competing thoughts. Tell me about that. Uh, yes, a little bit. I was able to follow along almost ninety percent. Okay. And and what did you not follow along with? Oh, I got distracted uh, with some stuff. Uh, like I'm still debating or contemplating about the privacy. It's, this is why. Oh, oh okay. For, well, for some reason, it came in and, and I was able to, to get aside and concentrate on your words. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, privacy issue is easy to do. So, okay. Um, okay, well, I'm going to do a little testing if I can mm -hmm. for the moment. Okay. You recall earlier I had you go back in time, close your eyes, go back in time. There you are walking out of the bathroom naked and you were a 10 and you had some physical sensations and so on. Close your eyes, go back and do that again. And tell me if you're still a 10 or if, if it's changed in any fashion, just tell me what happens. Yeah, I'm afraid of her gaze. It's, it's like the wave, like it's a strong wave. It's coming my way. 
I want to say I'm protected from it, but I still afraid of the wave, even though it's, it's not hitting me. It's like I see Teropas putting a bubble around me, but I still feel how, uh, I cannot say it's gay. No, one second. It's getting better. One minute. Um, so it's not a fear. Uh, dissatisfaction. Okay, can you ask me a question? Ask me again, please. Um, well, I, I had you. I had you redo, revisit that in the imagination. Run that movie again. And before you, you had shame listed at a ten intensity. You had a throat and left side chest symptom. I want to know when you visit it now, is it still shame? Are those symptoms still there? Is it, what else, what's there? No, is, this, is it still a 10? No, it's not a 10. The symptoms are not there. I'm still wondering why she's not, cannot accept me uh, who, the way I am, who I am. She, overall, she was very, she is very critical of, of us, two kids. You know, so this is kind of wondering why she cannot accept me who I am. Okay, but see that the fact that she cannot accept you about who you are, you and I have talked about that some. All mm -hmm. right, okay. But when you originally brought this up, it was shame that you had. I'm not hearing the word shame. I'm hearing she can't accept me for who I am. Yeah, I don't have a shame. It's not a shame. So the shame, the 10 shame went to zero. Yes. All right, that's important to recognize because that's what yes. we worked. That's, that's what you originally had in that specific event was shame. And you had the throat and left side chest. That's still not, that's not there. No, it's not there. Okay. No. Now the, why can't she accept me for who I am? Mm -hmm. Can you give me a zero to 10 on the intensity of that? That's about eight. All right. Are there physical sensations about that? Yeah, I feel sensational. Something in the center of the chest and in the center of a uh, kind of throat. No, one second. I just lost it. Maybe it's transitioning. Maybe it's uh, wearing it off. Maybe I said, is still working on it because it's, as I'm talking to you, I don't feel it. Okay, so... Gosh. That was, I think I think what you said was you think unseen therapist is still working on that because yes. it seems to be fading as we speak. Did I say say it right? Yes, sir. Yes. Well, let's test that for the moment because I we we did work we did have a piece of that in what we were doing anyway. That just wasn't part of the original specific event. Um, say this for me. Say. Why can't my mother accept me for who I am? Say that out loud and tell me what kind of intensity that brings. Why can't my mother accept me for who I am? Uh, oh, it's a light two, one. Well, okay, tell me at least academically as you understand, why can't your mother accept you? for who you are. Well, she was also, her parents, or mo, her mama was critical of her, so she bringing the same experience to the table. So she thinks it's the right way, or proper way to do it. Yeah. Uh, as a practical matter, well, um, do, even though you are who you are now and you're in America and you, you, know, you have different culture and all that kind of stuff, okay? And she recognizes this. You told me that she has some recognition of all of that. In your understanding and your feeling and your emotions, does she or does she not love you? Oh, she loves me. Like big time or sort of or what? Oh, no, no, no. She loves me a lot. Well, then she does love you regardless of who you are. I mean, I, that's what I'm hearing. Yes. 
I don't want to put words in your mouth. No, no, she, she loves me. <laughs> I, can, I don't want to say the, the, the way I am, <laughs> but she loves me. I know she loves me. Okay. She loves you, but if you were to tell her about the marital thing and some other stuff that might violate her cultural conditioning, she, she, may, she, she may have an issue with that, yes? Yeah, she might get a little bit distant, but it might wear off. All right. Might wear off or would wear off? What do you think? I'm sure with time it will wear off. Okay. So is the issue of your mother accepting who you are? I'm talking about she may not be able to accept some of your behaviors and some of the things going on in your marriage and all of that. Okay. Because of her conditioning and all of that. Um, but if I hear it right, she still loves you regardless. You're nodding your head, but I guess that means yes. Oh, yes. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Um, is that not, and I, I don't want to sit here and play with words. I, I, I'm going to get your real sense of this, okay? Is that not her accepting who you are as you are anyway? Maybe not liking it, but still accepting it? <laughs> uh, I, I agree with you. I agree. She's accepting that. It's like, I agree with you, but about 90 to 95%. But I feel like this was a 5% that she might fight it, or I fight but she's going to accept. She's right. accepting. Right. But it's, it's, it's completely changed from the beginning of the session. Yes. Okay. Well, that's, that was our aim. That was our good start part. Now, time is going to go on to find out whether or not your sexual issues start improving or not. But this particular session we did with Unseen Therapist is the kind of session that you can, I'm sending, sending you the recording, so you can play it over and over and over again. Because I think if you go through it again and again and again, it's going to have a little more impact each time, each time. And it should open some doors for you because you're one of our, you're one of our advanced students. So I now start to, you know how to start dealing with the specific events and doing them well and all of that. All right. So now you can launch off of this once we've now opened the door with a good start. And, and move forward in that. That would be the whole, we're not going to know how well this worked out. If we're just, it's a good start, beginners kind of thing. But time's got to go by for you to know how it works, but you can go back and go back to this session.